March 17, 2019, the International Terminals Company, or ITC, in Deer Park, Texas. ITC is a bulk liquid storage terminal used to store petroleum and petrochemical products for various companies. On the day of the incident, a pump catastrophically failed, releasing a large amount of flammable liquid from a storage tank into the surrounding containment area. When the flammable liquid ignited, a massive fire erupted, and ITC was unable to isolate or stop the release. The fire burned, intensified, and spread to 14 other tanks within the containment area before it was finally extinguished three days later. The incident at the ITC terminal resulted from several serious failures at the facility. In particular, ITC lacked monitors to alert operators that the pump had failed. And ITC had no remotely operated emergency isolation valves that could have safely stopped the release of the flammable liquid. The tank farm's design also meant that other tanks were highly vulnerable. Once the pump failed, it was too late to prevent a catastrophic fire from happening. At the time of the incident, the ITC Deer Park Terminal housed 242 storage tanks. One of those tanks was called Tank 80-8. It was an above-ground atmospheric storage tank leased by a local company. The tank had a capacity of 80,000 barrels and was used to store butane-enriched naphtha product, a flammable liquid blend of butane and naphtha. On the evening of March 16, 2019, Two tank trucks, loaded with butane, arrived at the terminal. 360 barrels of butane from those trucks was offloaded into tank 80-8. The tank circulation pump mixed the newly added butane with the butane-enriched naphtha product already in the tank. The pump remained on overnight. After that day's delivery, tank 80-8 was nearly full. ITC planned to transfer the contents of the tank to a chemical tanker ship around noon the next day. However, at approximately 7.25 a.m. on March 17th, data for the tank indicated a series of unanticipated changes. These included changes in the pump operating pressures, as well as in the tank's average flow rate and overall tank volume. But none of these changes were significant enough to trigger alarms in the central control room. Therefore, the control room operator was not alerted to the problem that was developing. The CSB found that a bearing installed on the motor side of the pump shaft had failed. This caused a misalignment in the pump that resulted in significant vibrations as it continued to operate. The vibrations caused four gland nuts that secured the pump's mechanical seal to loosen. The gland nuts became so loose that by 9.30 a.m., the mechanical seal partially opened. Because the pump was still circulating material in tank 80-8, butane-enriched naphtha product from the tank began to escape through the partially open seal. By around 9.45 a.m., the four gland nuts came off entirely causing the pump's mechanical seal to catastrophically fail. Even more flammable liquid escaped from the failed pump. The liquid accumulated around the pump and flammable vapors hovered near the ground and collected in low-lying areas. There were no operators working outside near tank 80-8 to notice anything out of the ordinary. And the terminal did not have any monitors in place that may have alerted operators of a problem such as flammable gas monitors or equipment monitors that register excess vibrations of the pump. Further, the decrease in tank volume did not trigger any alarms in the central control room. As a result, no measures were taken to isolate or secure the release from tank 80-8. In 30 minutes, the release grew to the equivalent of three concrete mixing trucks worth of flammable liquid. At 10 a.m., Flammable vapors in the area around the pump ignited, causing a large fire to erupt. Within minutes, members of the ITC emergency response team arrived on scene. But the tank was not equipped with a remotely operated emergency isolation valve. And because fire engulfed the area, emergency responders were not able to access the tank's main valves to manually close them. 
Therefore, ITC was unable to stop the large volume of flammable liquid in tank 80-8 from escaping. The tank was surrounded by 14 other similar storage tanks within a common containment area. Without subdivisions to separate them, these tanks were vulnerable to the large fire that was spreading along the ground. Later that day, other emergency responders arrived with additional firefighting equipment and resources to assist the ITC emergency response team. But despite their best efforts, the fire continued to grow. It eventually spread to the other 14 tanks located within the containment area. By the next evening, March 18th, ITC realized the need for additional resources. They requested assistance from a third-party emergency response services provider who arrived on scene the following morning, March 19th. With their arrival, responders were able to turn the tide and work to extinguish the remaining tank fires and prevent reignition. The fire was ultimately extinguished around 3 a.m. on the morning of March 20th. No ITC personnel or emergency responders were injured by the massive fire that burned for three days. The local community, however, experienced serious disruptions. These included several shelter-in-place orders due to benzene-related air quality concerns. On March 22nd, at around 12.15 p.m., the secondary containment wall surrounding the tank farm partially collapsed. A mixture of released hydrocarbon products, firefighting foam, and contaminated water escaped and eventually reached the Houston Ship Channel. As a result, a seven-mile stretch of the Houston Ship Channel and many nearby waterfront parks were closed. Operations to clean up the contamination continued for several weeks. The CSB launched an investigation and found that five safety issues contributed to the severity of the incident at ITC. They are pump mechanical integrity, flammable gas detection systems, remotely operated emergency isolation valves, tank farm design, and PSM and RMP applicability. The first safety issue is pump mechanical integrity. Mechanical integrity is defined as the management of critical process equipment to ensure it is designed and installed correctly and that it is operated and maintained properly. Mechanical integrity reduces the likelihood of unexpected equipment failure due to inadequate or infrequently performed maintenance. The CSB found that ITC had a mechanical integrity procedure in place for certain equipment, including pumps. But the procedure did not list any specific requirements for managing the pumps, such as maintenance procedures, training for pump replacements and rebuilds, or routine preventive maintenance activities. Furthermore, the company's mechanical integrity procedure only applied to equipment used to handle or store materials that the company listed as regulated chemicals. And naphtha and butane are not included on that list. Therefore, tank 80-8 and its associated pump were not subject to the company's mechanical integrity procedure. A formal mechanical integrity program for all pumps and highly hazardous chemical service could have prevented this incident. This type of proactive maintenance program would have given ITC additional opportunities to identify and correct issues with the circulation pump before it catastrophically failed. The second safety issue found at ITC is flammable gas detection systems. Gas detection systems are used in many process industries to protect personnel, property, and neighboring communities from the potential consequences of an accidental release. For example, a gas detection system can trigger alarms if it senses that gas or vapor concentrations are higher than normal. In this case, actions can be taken to stop a release before a potential fire or explosion occurs. At ITC, a hazard review team recommended in 2014 that a flammable gas detection system be installed near tank 80-8. But the CSB found that ITC did not implement this recommendation, and the company did not document why the installation never occurred. Therefore, in 2019, with no flammable gas detection system in place, there were no alarms to alert personnel about the initial release of flammable liquid from the tank. 
As a result, the release continued for approximately 30 minutes with no one noticing or attempting to stop it before the fire finally ignited. Terminals and other storage tank farms that handle large volumes of flammable or highly hazardous substances should install flammable gas detection systems at their facilities. These type of systems can warn operators about the presence of flammable substances so that actions can be taken before a major fire or explosion occurs. Therefore, the CSB made a recommendation to the American Petroleum Institute to update its standard for terminal and tank facilities to include a discussion of flammable gas detection systems. The third safety issue found by the CSB is remotely operated emergency isolation valves. None of the tanks involved in the fire at ITC were equipped with remotely operated emergency isolation valves. These valves are used to isolate the contents of above ground storage tanks from their associated equipment, such as pumps, in the case of a release. Instead, tank 80-8 was equipped with a manual isolation valve that could not be safely accessed once the fire ignited around the tank. As a result, flammable liquid from the tank continued to flow through the failed pump, adding fuel to the growing fire. Companies with above-ground atmospheric storage tanks that contain large volumes of flammable or highly hazardous substances should install remotely operated emergency isolation valves. These valves are designed to ensure that releases can be stopped quickly and remotely from a safe location, thereby mitigating a much larger incident. The fourth safety issue found at ITC is tank farm design. The National Fire Protection Association defines minimal requirements for tank farm design in its Flammable and Combustible Liquids Code, known as NFPA 30. During its investigation, the CSB found that the ITC tank farm was designed largely in accordance with applicable NFPA 30 requirements in place at the time of construction. But regardless, Elements of the tank farm design made it difficult for emergency responders to slow the initial fire and allowed the fire to spread to other tanks within the tank farm. These elements include many tanks spaced closely together and a lack of subdivisions within the containment area. As a result, hydrocarbon and petrochemical products, firefighting foam, and contaminated water accumulated within the tank farm and ultimately breached the facility's secondary containment wall, causing massive contamination of local waterways. The CSB notes that while NFPA 30 defines minimum requirements for tank farm design and spacing, other voluntary industry guidance documents by FM Global and the American Petroleum Institute provide more robust tank farm design criteria. ITC was not required to implement additional industry guidance recommendations since they were voluntary, and also because many of them were developed after construction of the tank farm. However, doing so could have prevented the escalation of this incident. Therefore, the CSB made a recommendation to ITC to conduct an evaluation of the design of all new and existing tank farms at the ITC Deer Park Terminal. The evaluation should assess the adequacy of the containment wall and drainage system designs, accounting for the impact of firefighting activities. Finally, the fifth safety issue identified at ITC is PSM and RMP applicability. Atmospheric storage tanks, like Tank 80-8, are exempt from OSHA's Process Safety Management, or PSM, standard. This means that ITC was not required to implement a formal process safety management program that could have effectively identified and controlled the hazards of the tank. For example, had tank 80-8 been subject to OSHA's PSM standard, ITC would have been required to have a mechanical integrity program that could have identified issues with the circulation pump before it failed and the company would have been required to track the 2014 recommendation to install a flammable gas detection system and document the resolution in a timely manner. The CSB has investigated two other incidents where it determined that the atmospheric storage tank exemption contributed to the severity of the incidents. Those incidents resulted in a fatality, multiple injuries, and significant environmental damage. The CSB believes this exemption should be eliminated. 
As a result, the CSB made a recommendation to OSHA to eliminate the atmospheric storage tank exemption from the PSM standard. In addition, EPA's Risk Management Plan, or RMP, rule did not apply to Tank 80-8. That is because the naphtha and butane mixture was exempted, as the rule only applies to materials with an NFPA flammability rating of 4, while the mixture is rated 3. As with OSHA's PSM standard, had the EPA RMP rule applied to the tank, even if the pump had leaked, additional safeguards should have been available. These include flammable gas detection and remote isolation equipment. It could have quickly identified and stopped the release and prevented the large fire. NFPA 3 rated materials have resulted in significant explosions and fires, several of which have been investigated by the CSB. We believe these materials should be covered under the RMP rule. Therefore, the CSB made a recommendation to the EPA to expand coverage of the RMP rule to include all flammable liquids, including mixtures, with a flammability rating of NFPA 3 or higher. This was a very large and very disruptive event. The massive fire burned for three days, caused over $150 million in property damage at the facility, and put the surrounding community at serious risk. It also significantly impacted the environment. This disastrous event could have been prevented if proper safeguards had been in place at the facility. A serious gap in federal regulations also contributed to the severity of this event. We believe that our recommendations, particularly to OSHA and EPA, to expand regulatory oversight of these kinds of chemicals and facilities will help ensure that a similar incident does not occur in the future. Thank you for watching this CSB safety video. For more information, go to csb.gov.